A campaign of bloodshed by anti-government elements has targeted mostly Afghans, both in uniform and civilians, including in previously calmer districts. They have, however, failed to achieve a significant military victory. The majority of violence takes place away from populated areas. The Afghan army and police have shown courage and increased capability in rising to the challenge of security transition. They increasingly trust themselves and work to earn the trust of the population despite heavy casualties in their ranks. As Afghanistan looks towards a brighter future, the enemies of Afghanistan, the enemies of peace, continue their violent campaign against civilians, soldiers, civil servants, men, women, children, and foreign forces. If they see brutality as the measure of their power, they are wrong. It's a measure of their weakness. It's not brave to kill a police officer particularly if she's a woman protecting and serving her country. It's time for the Taliban to stop the killing, renounce the violence, and heed the call to peace. We will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. As we progress through the transition period and beyond, it's imperative that human rights, particularly the rights of women and girls, are protected and promoted. The improvements in human rights, especially the rights of women, made since 2001 must not be reversed. We are deeply disturbed, as others have indicated as well, by recent reports of targeted and in some cases deadly attacks on Afghan female police, civil servants, government officials, as well as on others. Afghan women have a tremendous contribution to make to the future of their country, and they must be part of Afghanistan's civic life as leaders and decision makers.